My niece Mary was a helpless cripple. The United Fund called her to walk. The United Fund benefits everyone. Mrs. Carrie Cohen, in her 82nd year, really knows what benefits one gets from this fund. Without the United Fund, I would have lost my family and my citizenship. I never thought much about the United Fund until my son needed psychiatric treatment. Round the clock, day in, day out, volunteers and skilled workers of Red Feather Services throughout the Delaware Valley are ministering to the needs of our neighbors. Because we and they believe in the Federated Giving Plan once a year for all, they are spared the necessity of spending a great deal of money and a great deal of time in conducting individual fundraising campaigns of their own. George, have you got the help you need in the Metropolitan? Instead, an army of 5,000 volunteers, a group equal in size to the entire population of Bordentown, runs one annual fundraising effort. Daily, weekly, year-round, committees of the United Fund administer the programs and the funds, determine the policies, and meet the problems of getting the right kind of help to more than 65,000 people each year. The big problems come here, to the executive committee of the Delaware Valley United Fund. Every day, unpaid people from every walk of life are here. They study each problem. A new organization would like to become a member service. Sure, Mr. Chairman, everyone wants to eliminate one more campaign. But if we approve this new agency, we'll have to raise $25,000 extra next year. There are the emergencies. The boys club needs a new heating plant. The roof at the YMCA has sprung a leak. A local disaster has unexpectedly cost the Red Cross thousands of dollars. The budget committee recommends these appropriations. Perhaps the United Fund can be compared to a family of more than 50 persons. Each has its needs, but there's so much money and no more to go around. We have a request for an additional appropriation from the Catholic Welfare Bureau. Will you please study this carefully and see whether we can meet their wishes in view of our previous commitment to the Salvation Army? Discuss, consider, compromise. Invariably, the best decision is made because everyone is here. Catholic, Protestant, and Jew. Labor and management. Big giver, little giver. Every voice is heard, and better campaigns are planned. The campaign organization is now complete. We ask that each one give his fair share where he works. A fair share is one hour's pay per month. Preliminary reports indicate that the campaign will be successful and completed on time. Well, you've seen two minutes of a typical DVUF meeting. You've seen one of the reasons why United Fund costs are the lowest of any campaign run anywhere. Ninety-two cents of every dollar you give goes to provide needed service. Suppose for a minute that you had the job of raising more than a million dollars this year. Where would you begin? Thomas Jefferson once said, give the people the facts and they'll know what to do. We're at the General Motors Turnstead Division plant, and here is Mrs. Josette Norris. Mrs. Norris, would you tell us something about uh, what the United Fund means to you? Without the United Fund, I would have lost my family and my citizenship. You want to tell us something about that story? I was born in Corsica, and I was raised in France. I was captured by the Nazis in Algiers, and then I came to America, to Trenton. Josette and her husband were blessed with two sons and a daughter while they lived in this, their first home. Then the marriage started to fall apart. You want to tell us about what happened after your divorce? I was left with 15 cents cash and thousands of dollars of debt. My son Billy got caught with traumatic fever. 
which left him a bit out. You didn't have very much in the way of personal possessions, did you? I didn't have no furniture. My furniture were gone. I have lost everything. No friends, no money, and left with an accent which nobody could understand. Josette could take only so much, but she was almost licked by the cost of babysitters and the cleaning up of old debts. In the nick of time, a neighbor told her about the Carolyn Stokes Day Nursery. How could I keep my job in General Motors and keep my family together? We appreciate your problem here at Carolyn Stokes Nursery, and we admire your spirit. We can take Joanne. That will be a help. I'm sure she'll be very happy here. She'll do such things as painting, finger painting, and so forth. And she'll be under the supervision of good, experienced teachers. But how much would that cost me? Well, in going over your budget, I, it would cost you, including transportation, four fifty a week. Only four fifty? How come? You see, the United Fund makes up the difference. My, how wonderful! The care of preschool children for mothers who hold jobs is a mighty important part of the work that goes on here. There are children from broken homes, children who are learning how to get along with others, youngsters from homes whose parents are ill. What has been accomplished for Josette? Well, she now lives in a spick and span apartment in Trenton's Wilson Homes. She's not on public relief, but she's a productive, thankful citizen who is a tribute not only to motherhood, but to her adopted America. As long as I'm able to work, I will give my fair share to the United Fund. I saw how the United Fund dollars turned Mary from a helpless cripple into a capable young lady. Uh, Mary was brought to me on May the 30th, 1944, uh, with a history of having limped since she was one year of age at the time she, which was the time she began to walk. Uh, examination showed her to have a congenital dislocation of the right hip. Uh, by a congenital dislocation, I mean the hip was born, the child was born with her hip out of place. Normally, the hip sets so in the acetabulum or the hip joint, but in her case, it was displaced upward in this manner. Uh, treatment for the condition was advised and later carried out. Had she not had this uh, treatment, she would necessarily uh, have been a permanent cripple. Brave little patients, sick and in pain, but still able to smile. Ever hear of Perthes disease, tuberculosis of the bones, club foot? They're the kind of things that not only cripple a child, but soon drive the savings, the hopes, and the spirit of parents down to rock bottom. Mary Corrigan has spent more than half her lifetime here. Eight years in the hospital, she was educated here. A school teacher is assigned by the Board of Education to run this little classroom. Now do you know why the United Fund supports some hospital patients when you and I pay our own bills? In eight years, Orthopedic Hospital averaged $18.60 a day for Mary Corrigan's care. The doctors worked without pay. The social service worker helped the family over their hurdles. The administrator coordinated all the work. The physical therapist for exercise. Dozens of nurses, teachers, and clerks passed through Mary Corrigan's life at orthopedic. Doctor, would you please demonstrate these films of Mary made during the course of her treatment? Uh, this film shows the dislocation of the hip from its normal position. This one shows the hip after it was reduced and in a plaster cast. This one shows the hip several months later, still in its normal position, but the head deformed. And this was the last one taken at the age of 12. The hip is still in place, but malformed. Thank you very much. Mrs. Corrigan, I can see now why you give so generously to the United Fund. How much do you give, by the way? I gave $2 a week from a $29 salary. $2 a week out of a $29 salary. That's approximately 7% and very generous giving. Do you see much of Mary, by the way? She comes over every summer. Spends the summer with you. 
And uh, she lives all the rest of the year where? In Newark with her mother. I see. How is she in school, by the way? Well, why don't you ask Mary? Well, Mary, how good are you in school? Well, Leah Cycle, I got all A's in my report card, and I'm among the top ten of my graduating class. That's wonderful. Tell me, what are your plans for after school? Well, I'm taking a business course. I hope to be a secretary or something on that line. You spent eight long years out of your 15 in this hospital, didn't you? Yes, I did. Did you start uh, school here, too? Yes, yeah, right in this room. In this very room. Well, it's a wonderful education you've gotten because uh, it certainly helped you in your schooling in later life. Mary, after those eight long years of treatment and learning in this room, we'd like to see how well you've done. Would you care to do a dance step for us? I'd love to. There's an old saying which goes, I cried because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. Good luck, Mary. Your future life is bound to be richer than the past because you know particularly that others do care. I, like most lawyers, give to the United Fund because it assures the most care and the best care for the greatest number of people. It is just a coincidence that a very dear friend of mine is one of the outstanding beneficiaries of this great fund. Diagonally across the street from the United Fund headquarters is the Jewish Home for the Aged, along with Morris Hall Home, one of two institutions for our neighbors in their golden years. Carrie Cohn lives here with many friends. How old are you, Mrs. Cohn? 81. I was 81 in January. Well, I'm told that you were once very wealthy. Is that true? I certainly was once very wealthy. Uh, that uh, your husband owned considerable real estate in Trenton. What's that? Your husband owned considerable real estate in Trenton. Yes. And uh, what's happened uh, to well, our property? Well, he died, and my son was very young, and mm -hmm. couldn't understand, and he was lost everything, that's all. Why are you living here, Mrs. Cohen? Because I had met with an accident and broke my hip, and I wasn't able to take care of myself. Little did Carrie Cohen realize that her many gifts to this home years ago would someday assure her own reward. It is written in ancient scrolls in the Talmud, Charity outweighs all the other commandments. The Delaware Valley Fund never meant much to me until I found out my son had an emotional problem. Our clinic does help children who present emotional problems. We also try to help parents to understand their children. We feel that once we can get parents and children understanding each other, they'll get along much better together. Do you think you could help us with our problem? You say that Kenneth is presenting a problem? That's right. He's shy and timid and doesn't mix as well with his friends as he really should and clings to me more than we think he should. I see. He is intelligent, but uh, he seems to be failing in school. Here's another team about to go to work to help a child and his parents. The psychiatrist will begin to understand the boy by talking to him. Then the psychologist will use tests to learn more about the boy. The social worker will talk with Kenneth's parents. Together, they will find a way to help Kenneth and his parents, along with the many other families who have come to the clinic. Kenny, how is it when this little calf uh, gets away from its mommy? Doesn't get no milk and um, uh, it's scared. Mm -hmm. Gets scared, does it? Could you tell me how, how it feels when you go to school? Sort of funny, I like to stay home. You'd like to stay home, uh-huh. Kenny, how about if you tell me about this picture you made? Well, it's a boy in an ice cream cone. And how does he feel? Very hungry. Yes. Anything else? Was she had another one? Mm-hmm. What do you think of Kenneth, Doctor? He's a real nice boy. He's, uh got a lot of good points about him, good intelligence. But you know, there are, there are several things that trouble us about Kenny. He's a boy that doesn't have much self-confidence. He's immature, he clings to his mother, he's sometimes fearful. We'd like 
to have him come to our center. How long? Maybe another few months. How much? We have two choices. We will either correct Kenneth's problems now at relatively low cost, or we will forsake him for the time being, only to spend the rest of our lives paying his way if he can't work. In the weeks that passed while we prepared to film Kenneth's story, we saw improvement day by day, week by week. His future is bright. By the time you've seen this, the adjustment may have been completed. Now wait. Don't turn away. Just as we need the love and the understanding of others. Just as we need tomorrow's paycheck, health, freedom and liberty. We need to give and to share. Yes, the need is great. And it's our need, our very great need, to give and to share.